Today, I want to talk about a watch that I believe isn't getting enough attention. There are many watches that fall under the same category, but this one I've personally handled, and all I can say is that it is no BS. I want to talk about Norcane. Norway, what now? Hi everyone, my name is Abdullah and I talk about watches. But before I start rambling, just do me a little favor and hit that like and subscribe button. Before I talk about Norcane, I want to talk about Hublot. Because in my opinion, there is a small connection between these two brands that allow them to be quite comparable with each other. Hublot has been getting a lot of hate as usual. But recently I realized that it's also getting some defense. Like people are defending Hublot's recent designs. But regardless of what people are saying, the absolute hatred towards this brand is legendary. From what I see, it's not a watch that you buy for its specifications. It's a watch you buy for sentimental value. And that's okay. But the undeniable truth is that when it comes to the actual watchmaking and the actual value, the price just isn't justifiable. You can say that it is simply overpriced, overhyped, and overmarketed. Am I describing Richard Meal? But anyway, that's why most watch enthusiasts are not a fan of the brand. But there is one strong thing about Hublot, and that is its connection with Jean Claude Bivet. Well, that's all good, but why am I talking about Hublot in the context of Norcane? Like, what is the connection between these two brands? And the connection between both of these brands is also Jean-Claude Bivet. If you're a watch enthusiast, you will have heard of Jean-Claude Bivet, the industry legend, or will have at least heard his name being thrown around. He is the sole person credited with saving the Swiss watch industry during the quartz crisis. Some of his more prominent achievements include resurrecting Omega and Blancpain, being the president of LVMH's watch division, where he oversaw brands such as Tag Heuer, Zenit, and Hublot. No wonder they call him the godfather of the Swiss watch industry. So he recently announced that he will be starting his own watch company, JCBV, but as these watches will be small in production, highly limited, highly exclusive, and very very expensive, there is no way that mere mortals like us will ever be able to afford these. But he has also done something very surprising. This year, he teamed up with Norcane and was directly involved in the production of the Norcane Wild One. In his interview, he said that this collaboration was his way of contributing to the new generation of watchmakers. This is big news because it creates a precedence that a big name in the watch industry can do collaborations with much smaller and much newer brands as long as they have a good approach to watchmaking. Now, Norcane is a family-owned independent watch brand from Switzerland and has been operating since 2018. But don't let their recentness fool you. The people that are running the brand have been involved with the watch industry for decades. Also, we talk about in-house movements a lot, but we rarely talk about in-house designs. That's exactly what Norcane does. All of their watches are designed and handled A to Z in Switzerland by Norcane, not a third-party designer. As for their movement, they're very transparent, which is extremely refreshing to see. They use both third-party movements from Celita and Eta for their more attainable models, along with manufacturer calibers from Canisi, the same movement maker that produces movements for the likes of Tudor. Now, I'm on the website. Let's just look at this watch. The Norcane Wild One falls under the brand's independence collection and is made with their proprietary Nortec carbon fiber material, which is six times lighter than steel and 3.5 lighter than titanium. The case is constructed with black Nortec with an inbuilt shock absorber and a sandblasted titanium container and case back. You have a flat sapphire crystal, a screw down crown, case size of 42 millimeters, thickness of 12.3 millimeters, and a lug to lug distance of 49.4 millimeters which makes this, as a sports watch, a very 
variable case size. You also get a 200 meters of water resistance with a screw down crown and a lug width of 22 millimeters. The case is made up of 25 parts, including screws. Each watch weighs just 84 grams, which is 50% lighter than a stainless steel Norcane watch. And what's impressive is that the shock absorption isn't just a hype thing that they're throwing around. This watch can withstand 5,000 Gs of force. The dial comes in a three-level laser-cut Mandela-like pattern with skeletonized indices and handset and an integrated rubber strap. The movement used is a COSC certified automatic caliber NN20-1 with a beat frequency of 4Hz or 28,800 vibrations per hour and 70 hours of power reserve. And you can get this. You can get all of this for $5,000. Now, that's not cheap, but a $5,000 for a watch that is built to be used and abused and having a connection with John Claude B. Bay. To me, that's value. Whether this watch is for you or not, that's a separate discussion. I personally don't like Richard Neal, but I appreciate their watchmaking innovation. In the same way, the Norcane Wild one may not be for you, but you still have to appreciate the design and the value that it brings. It not only has a direct connection with the mindset of John claude Bivet, but sets a whole new standard for a true modern luxury sports watch. Not a sports watch that's been considered a sports watch in the 60s or 70s and is now a hyped up dress piece that lives in a watch safe, but an actual indestructible tool watch. Unfortunately, like many new up and coming watch brands, Norkin doesn't have the deserved brand recognition, but just because of that, you shouldn't ignore this brand. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.